Hey, this is Cole with Fairwheel Bikes. Today we're looking at the new Shimano Wireless XTR Di2 mountain bike group set. It's been quite a few years since Shimano has done an update on electronic and they've made a lot of changes. This video will just kind of go into what's new, what's changed, and what's special. Let's start with the brakes. The kits will come in two versions, Trail and XC. This bike is going to be an XC build. Uh, the XC brake is relatively unchanged. There's been one complaint that sometimes pops up about current XTR brakes, and that's they lack consistency in bite and modulation. So Shimano switched to a low viscosity mineral oil, creates a more consistent bite, more consistent modulation. Um, they've switched from a ceramic piston to a resin piston, and they've retuned the seals to match the rate of the lower viscosity fluid. I know one thing that'll come up is we'll, we'll definitely get asked, can you use the low viscosity fluid in the older brakes? The answer is a resounding no. Uh, it'll feel great in the stand, but once you put some heat into the system, the brakes will be gone. So not an option. Uh, the trail brake version of this, same changes, uh, resin piston instead of ceramic, new seals to match the lower viscosity. Uh, caliper is a four piston. The lever will be a servo wave lever with some more adjustments than this one, reach servo wave. It also has the pivot point moved back five millimeters, so there will be a straighter lever path from lever to bar, less of an arc, more of a straight travel. Shimano has changed the brake pads to a larger size and ovalized the hole that the pin goes through that connects it to the caliper. This allows the brake pad when in to not rattle or move under load as we've seen in previous versions. These new brake pads will still be backwards compatible with previous versions. It's my understanding that by the time this video comes out, Shimano will have officially approved mixing and matching within the LV line. So you will be able to run the two piston caliper with the more adjustable trail brake and get that servo wave action. Personally, that's what I'm gonna be looking forward to. And I suspect a lot of you will too. Next, we have the XTR crank, going to come in XC and Trail. Shimano stuck with their hollow forge technology, 24 millimeter spindles. The Trail crank and the XC crank are virtually the same. The difference between the two is that the Trail crank is going to have a little bit thicker of a spindle. Heavier wall thickness, a little more durability, a little more stiffness about 20 grams of weight. The trail crank is gonna come in a wider variety of lengths and it's also gonna be offered in shorter versions than the XC crank. Chain ring sizes are gonna be 28 to 38 in two tooth increments. And then we've also got two new wheels from Shimano, um, XC and trail again. The XC version will have a straight pull hub, titanium spokes, and a 30 mil internal on the rim. Trail version will be running J-Bend hubs and J-Bend steel spokes. When we weighed this wheel set, it came out to 1150 without tape and valves. One big change for them this year is they've gone from a cup and cone system to a cartridge bearing. Still center lock, still micro spline as you would expect. Shimano's done a great job with an electronic shifter making it feel mechanical. It has a heavy detent and the tactile feel. The triggers have a double press function which is able to be locked out through a two millimeter below. Flip it like that. And then after you do that, it's a single click. The shifter itself on the bar, you adjust the position by the ice pack, but the paddles themselves come with four way adjustment. You can adjust the paddle any way you like. And both paddles are like this. So it, the, it opens the door for a ton of customization. They've also added a bonus button here, which out of the box is pre-programmed for trim functions. So you can adjust your derailleur on the fly. Should you hit a rock, bend a hanger, need to fine tune your adjustment. It's kind of a nice feature for mechanics who are doing bike builds. You don't have to go back and forth between the derailleur and the shifter. You just put it into adjustment, adjust it, set it back to shifting. This is the most exciting part for me because now Shimano has gone fully electric, fully wireless with a removable battery to charge. Shimano has decided not to go U UDH. They're gonna stick with traditional hanger. They just feel it's more important to be able to replace a hanger, not potentially damage your frame. Uh, moving down from there, you'll notice this front has been streamlined a lot. 
That's to help with rock strikes bouncing off. This they accomplished by removing the clutch. They replaced the clutch with a dual spring inside. The dual spring combined with some extra chain wrap capacity has actually given them 70% more chain tension than the previous derailleur, even without the clutch. Plus you get the bonus of not having clutch fade over time. The derailleur has more chain wrap as part of the chain retention function. It's allowing Shimano to go to smaller cogs and keep better chain tension. They're saying that even a worn out cassette may not skip because of the additional chain wrap. It just engages with more teeth at once. It's very easy to take the battery out as well. And they even put a really cool little thumb tab on it so that you can pull it down and out and not have to like flick your battery across the room. The battery is multiple seals. It's behind one seal here as a door. The contacts of the battery are up at the top. So water needs to penetrate this seal. A second seal at the top of the cylinder where the battery mates in. And then the vertical climb as well. The Shimano XTR derailleur has an automatic sleep system that happens after 30 minutes of non-use. It'll wake up again as soon as you hit the shifter button to shift it. This allows for the battery life to last longer and for less of an issue if you're traveling with the bike on the back of your car. Another cool feature of this derailleur is it now has crash recovery mode and it's automatic. So when you hit a rock, Previous versions of Shimano's impact recovery required a rider to get off of their bike and do a manual fix to the derailleur in order to continue going. Now, with automatic impact recovery, a rider can keep going after having a rock strike, brushing something, um, anything that causes the derailleur to go into that mode. The mode is an electronic decoupling that allows for the derailleur to return to its original position where it was shifted to prior to the strike, allowing the rider to continue riding, keep going, and not have to do a manual fix and stop their ride or pause their ride. The architecture for the DI2 continues over across the whole entire Shimano line. So this derailleur, even though it's mountain, can pair with wireless road shifters, vice versa. Uh, they've removed holes from the pulley wheels, so no gunk, no sticks, harder to break, easier to keep clean. With this derailleur, we're getting two new versions. So there's gonna be a standard and a medium cage. The medium cage Shimano is referring to as a compact. With the standard, you'll still see the regular 1051 with the 32 tooth chain ring. With the medium cage or the compact, the cassette is going to be brand new with a new tool. Historically, Shimano hasn't loved using a smaller tooth cog, but with the increased chain wrap, they're still getting great tension on that nine tooth cog. The cassette ratio will be nine tooth to 45 tooth, and then the chain ring will be a 28 tooth. You're gonna get about two, two and a half centimeters more clearance here. You're gonna have a smaller chain ring, more clearance here, so less ability to smash your chain ring. And ultimately you end up with the same gear ratio that the 32 has with the 1051. Um, the nice feature about the compact is it will be about 70 grams lighter than the standard setup. Wouldn't be fair wheel if we didn't talk about the weights. When we're talking about the weights, we're talking about the drive system. We looked at the key pieces being the shifter, the cassette, the derailleur, the battery, and the chain. Lining them up, you end up with compact XTR as the lightest, double XSL below it, uh, standard XTR, and then double X below that. Relatively small differences between them. It is worth note that if you're comparing those two groups for your bike, obviously you've got a UDH frame, which to be fair, you really need to take into account the additional weight of the added hanger for converting your UDH to a standard hanger. In this case, it's about 23 grams. That brings the weight differences between the groups to a really negligible amount. It's about 10 grams between compact XTR and double XSL and about 10 grams between standard XTR and double X. We now have a few months experience with this group set. If you have technical questions, leave those in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them. These XTR groups are in limited availability. We are excited to have some in stock. 
If you'd like to build a bike, reach out to us at Fairwheel Bikes with our contact information in the description. We'll be happy to guide you through the process of any bike build that you're looking to do. If you want to help us keep doing what we're doing, like and subscribe to the channel. This is what's going to help us get things like limited group sets, new releases, products that we haven't seen on the market yet, and be able to do more tests and present them to you. We're also going to be doing some subscriber giveaways. Uh, these will come in the form of brands that we've worked with in the past, um, and we're going to see some cool swag, maybe even some products in the future.